Hey everybody, and welcome back to number nine of my uh, Hydrant Your Pro Through. In this one, I'm going to concentrate on making a logistic system to automate the gem condensers. Um, that way they fire off at a semi-regular rate. Um, my purpose here is that the, uh, the mouths of them were getting filled up with gems because I wasn't here to uh, push the lever all the time. I was downstairs building and I was doing stuff. Um, so the plan is to get that up and running today. Let's see how far I get. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining me for this, uh, this series and this episode. Uh, if you like, you know, subscribe, all that fun stuff, do the things, push the buttons, and uh, leave me comments. Uh, let me know. Anyways, uh, ask questions, all the rest of that fun stuff. If I need to show more than what I did, because I think I skipped past this a little quickly when I did this video, uh, looking back at it and editing it, I think I went over a little quick. But anyways, uh, we'll talk to you on the other side. So uh, my plan today is to put a logistic system on these uh, gem condensers. Uh, in my mind, I, and I, I throw this stuff together with barely a, um, some penciling on a napkin as far as that goes. Uh, but my thinking is I need a counter. I'm not sure where I want to put it. I want it down here. I want it, yeah. I'm thinking right there. Where's my hammer? So after I get, let's put you over here. After I get this in place, anything running underneath it will add, which way does this go now? I want the logistics to the back. Uh, anything running underneath it will put a counter. It'll, it'll increase that counter in, in the front. Um, then the top and the sides are for input and output. Uh, meaning there's uh, two logistic input and output. There's one on the top, and then there's one on the side. Um, now, I need to run um, logistic lines, and I'm going to do it underneath the foundations. I'm going to run them clean so that the, the factory floor doesn't have a whole bunch of junk on it. Uh, then my plan is to be able to stand in between each one of these to be able to look down inside the gem compressor uh, to grab jams to do things to do whatever. Um, I was going to run this stuff um, from behind, but I think underneath is the best way to go. So as you can see, the number nine up there, every time a gem goes underneath it, it, it adds to the counter. So the only thinking is I need something to track that counter. When it gets to a certain number, I need to send a signal to make the gem compressors work. Then I need to reset that counter. So that's my thinking. For this, uh, amongst a bunch of new parts, I have a greater than or equal to when signal A is greater than or equal to sing signal B. And then I'll show you where that. Okay, on, get in there. I'll show you how that um, pans out in the in the wash. I gotta I gotta do some figuring here. Uh, my plan is to run this stuff underneath. Now, it, it, one of the great things about Hydroneer is when you change your mind, <laughs> which which I do lots of, uh, you can uh, pull out um, stuff like foundations and parts and pieces won't fall down, uh, which is nice. Um, on, on one side, it, it's not realistic, but on the other side, it's really nice because then you can uh, do this and you can pull... Uh, mm -hmm. You can pull foundations out and things don't fall down, which is kind of nice. Uh, but my plan is to dig um, underneath these, dig a trench, and run it to uh, this singular foundation that I have connecting. Oh, that's looking good. Uh, the singular foundation, off to my left, is connecting the farm and the kitchen where I'm going to be creating a lot of food and whatnot, with, uh, where is it? there it is, 
um, with uh, the farm, the farm area, and whatnot. And I was going to try to run it as two separate buildings with uh, like a connecting corridor. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that works out. Where's my rake? No. Wasn't this where I was? Oh, right. I was using it out here. There you are. Oh, not deep enough. I do love the rake. Thank you, Dev. Uh, it makes such clean lines and clean trenches. Oh. So now this is going to run uh, down below. And then, if I can figure my... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that I struggle with that. Uh, I don't think there's any clear way of showing it. But anyway, um, I'm going to put a ramp and... Or I don't know whether I can fit a stairway. I'm going to put a ramp on top of this logistic line. Uh, on the side of each one of these. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about the rest of you, but I like to have a big old cache of whatever, everything sitting around. So I went shopping, I bought everything, and I bought multiples of them, timers. I, in my in my um, building of this, I started to think that I wasn't absolutely sure whether my thinking was going to work. Um, like I said, it's basically just, you know, scratched on a napkin at best. So... Well, well uh, I'll, I'll weave my way through this and try to, because uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't think the first time I make this, it's going to cut it. I don't think it's going to work. And so I figured I better go get some parts and pieces. And I'm going to put um, some switches, or at least one switch. I might put a reset. I'm not absolutely sure. Um but I'm going to do that on the far side of the wall. So I figured I'd better grab some walls. I wasn't ready to put up walls, but but uh, I don't really want the switch just sitting there. I'm not just sure which way I want to do this. So with everything back in, it's now time to put the floor back in. And now, as you can see, um, it looks nice and clean. Uh, all the lines are running um, down underground. Uh, I'll be putting ramps and platforms on top of those so that I can get down into the... Uh, the gem crushers or the gem condensers. Uh, I'm not too happy with where these lines ended up. I'm thinking of running them into the roof, but I need to get this system hooked up. So if A is greater than or equal to B, so A will be the signal coming from the counter. B will be the signal I put in from a switch. Okay, wait. Or should I do it this way? Okay, I think I need a counter here just to tell me what's going on. Yeah, okay, it's working. I think I want to put this switch through the wall. Oops, ah, I should have nailed that down. Alrighty. Always nail your stuff down. <laughs> How am I going to reset this? I think this might work. Oh, keypad. Sure, I got a keypad somewhere. I was sure I had a keypad somewhere. Okay, well, this needs to go... Um, um, logic can only travel in one direction. I gotta wait. I gotta put that up after. So I think I do need to turn this around. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other way. There we go. And this is why I want the logistics system to begin with, because I, I have to keep going back and redoing these and cleaning them up all the time. Well, what the... Why did that? Oh, because it's hooked up now. That was the next gem count. Ha <laughs> ha! So I need a keypad for when to do it and a reset. That's not going to work. So 
But what if I pull this and put it... Yeah, it's, it still doesn't stop them. No. Hmm. Troubleshooting your logistic system when you didn't come up with a plan. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that does it. Okay, so I just flipped the video. Um, we were working on this. I need to get some stuff. More stuff, more stuff, more stuff. So I don't normally show me going shopping, but I wanted to show you how you can um, get large amounts of items. I didn't back up far enough with this one. But you back the truck up and then you load the truck with whatever you need, right? It don't matter. And then, well, I could reach that, but I think I need, I think I got everything. You can always jump back in the truck and you can move the truck. Now it doesn't work in all of the uh, all of the areas, um, and you do want to be well, it's a little closer than what I was. I guess I rolled away. But when you jump in the truck, and then you load, and you load as much of whatever you need. Sometimes you got to go a little slow because it doesn't want to fall. You notice it has trouble falling once in a while if you go too quick. So, it, I mean, you're not um, able to go Speedy Gonzalez on this, but it's a lot faster than grabbing it, putting it on the pad, and then picking it off the pad and putting it in the truck. This alleviates one step. Then you take your truck. My lads work great for underground farms. A couple of these. Hang on. But I think you see where I'm going with this. I hope. A couple of each. Can't reach that one. There we go. I like to have a large supply of logistics when I'm up on the money. And I'm not uh, struggling anymore. Uh, I like to get a large a large collection of this stuff sitting around. It's, uh, it's nice to have. Um... And you just take your whole entire truck and park it over top of the pad. Grab cash. And there you go. And that's how you can just load the truck once. Okay, no. Okay, hang on. i got to figure out the math here, everybody. I think I need coffee, though. I think it needs to go that way. Okay, but... This way. Why can't I put you on there? I don't 
have anything else. I think everything's hooked up. I chose 10. So when the counter goes to 10, it sends a signal. I think I got those two right. Everything's all set. Still getting Jim stuck. Now that's at five. I need it to go to 10. I wonder if I throw the switch. Okay. That worked. But they won't open. It reset the counter. Sorry, everybody, I'm still wrapping my head around this. I need to get it to reset so that they open back up again afterwards. Maybe a timer? Or if I took that out and put it after to turn it into... Okay, well, I can go there now. Throw the switch again. I'm missing something. Huh. So it's constantly resetting it. want it to constantly reset. I want it to stop. Timer? I grabbed everything, didn't I? You were a mistake. And it works. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to try to explain this. Um, <clears throat> when I'm setting up a logic system, sometimes I, I will, I don't know, uh, bowl in a china shop my way through it. Um, sometimes we call it bobbing. Uh, man with no arms, no legs, uh, sits in the ocean, bobs around. In other words, uh, I'll just kind of bullhead my way through it and try to figure it out. Now, part of the reason is if you read the descriptions of a lot of these some are a little vague at times, um, like the logic gem compressor. Pass logic into it to turn it on. Mm, so is that a signal of one or is that a signal of zero? Is that a greater? It, it It's a little vague. It's not, it does explain it. So anyways, this uh, system starts with the logic counter. Uh, and the logic counter counts items, pass through it, and then it sets up a count and it just starts to count. Now, the uh, logic reading is on the side. In other words, I have one thing passed underneath. I have two, four, three, four, five, six, seven, and that will pass down this cable. 
that leads to the um, greater than, less than, which takes a look at the signal and is it greater than or less than what I have personally inputted into side B. Now, when side A and side B are equal, or if A is greater than or equal to, then that will send a signal down. Well, I'm, I got it facing up, but it's going to face it down and to the logic gem compressor telling it to do its thing. At the same time, I send the same signal uh, the other way through a T intersection up through a logic, you might remember the connection on the back, a logic diode hook, okay, which only allows logic to pass one direction because I don't want the signal coming back. Then it goes through a validator hook, which only lets a logic value of one or greater because I don't want the zero value coming out of the greater than or equal to T intersection. Um, then I put it through a logic flip hook. Um, you don't always need this in logistic systems, but for this one, um, it was needed. I, I tried it a couple of different ways and it didn't work for me. So you got to be in the right order as well. The logic flip hook, it turns an incoming logic signal of zero into one and anything bigger or equal to one into a zero. Now, I can't get a definitive description when I look stuff up um, for this game. Nothing against it's it's being worked on, but I don't know whether it's a one or a zero that resets the counter. So when the counter sends a signal to the greater than or equal to, when A equals B, it sends a signal down over to the gem compressor and over to the diode hook. That's the one with the arrow. From that diode hook, it goes to the validator hook. From the validator hook, it goes to the logic flip hook. Now, the first one, the arrow, that just means it can only go in one direction. So let's ignore the, the arrow for a second. The validator hook only lots a logic value pass if it is one or greater. Okay, then it goes to the flip, meaning that a zero will not be allowed to go through here. So when the greater than or equal to goes back to sending a zero signal, which it will do, when the keypad B signal does not match the A signal. I hope I'm not losing too many people here. <laughs> I could probably describe this a little better, but um, maybe I'll go back. Hang on. Okay. So, so the, and I wish I knew how to put a cursor on the screen. I know how to draw lines, obviously, but I wish I could put my cursor on the screen and, and do this. Um, so, because I'm doing this post-edit, everybody. It's not like I, I thought this might be a better way. So let me let me go back. Let me let me okay. So the counter counts up to 10. As soon as it hits 10, the signal coming from the counter equals the keypad. When that happens, it sends. I'm gonna say that the greater than or equal to is sending a signal of zero before those are equal, greater than or equal to. Then, once those are greater than or equal to, it will send a signal of 1. That 1 goes to the gem compressor that tells it to go. That 1 also goes around to the diode hook. doesn't really matter. All it's doing is making sure that things go up. Remember, that arrow is pointing up. You'll see it in the far left hand of the screen as well. So that just makes sure nothing come back. Then... It goes through the validator hook, which says it's only going to allow if it's a one, meaning it won't allow the zero coming from the greater than or the, the T intersection. Okay, the A, B greater than or equal to. So it's only going to let a one pass. Okay, so we now have a one because the counter and the keypad are equal. So one gets sent up the line. It makes it past the, of course, diode hook, which just 
because it's going the right direction. Uh, then it goes through the validator hook because it's, hey, we have a one. Okay, let's let that pass. Then it goes to the flip hook, which is the two arrows pointing either direction. Turns an incoming logic of zero, which that's not what we have. We have a signal of one. So it turns anything bigger or equal to one into a zero. That is the zero that gets passed back to the counter. Once that counter gets a signal of zero, it resets the counter. Now, there's other logic systems that work relatively the same. I wish, uh, some days I wish I was playing Factorio. I had, uh, I had quite the systems running on that. Um, my only bobbing around in this is I don't play it enough. Um, and I, I, I don't want to put anybody down for their game or their descriptions or their wiki pages or everything else, but a little better description as to what signal comes out of a greater than or equal to. Now I'm saying it's a zero. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I got to give it a value when I'm making my description to you guys. Okay, so I got it. So I'm saying it's a zero. Am I absolutely definitively correct on that? I don't know. Because when I look up the description of the greater than, it says compares A is bigger than or equal to B will output a, sigur, a, a, a logic value of one or zero. One or zero. Okay, well, oh, hang on. Compares if A is bigger or equal to B will output a, a logic value of one or zero. So that, uh, I don't know about you, but in, in when I read that description, it doesn't say when A is bigger or equal to B, it will output one. Otherwise, it will output a zero. You see, that's a that's a way different description in my book. Uh, it also is a little more definitive as to, well, what signal am I getting if they're unequal or less than? Or what signal am I getting if it's greater than or equal to? And there are other um, um, comparison T intersections, let's call them. Uh, these are equivalent to um, statements, an and if, and then, uh, what if, these different statements that are used in computer programming. Now, I'm, I'm not a programmer, I, but I do know what, what an if statement is and uh, basically what to do with it, obviously. So that is how this system works. Um, I'm hoping I don't need a better explanation. I'm hoping the pictures and the, and the lines and the stuff, I hope this, I hope this explains it to everybody. Um, it's a fairly simple system. I lost my line between B and, oh, well, I'll see if I can put it in there after I'm, after I'm done. Um, I'm hoping this explains, I'm going to possibly do some other stuff with logics in, in this game. Uh, I'm not done. I don't do auto smelting myself. I, I, I don't see the point when I need to smelt something, I'll come by and tap the smelter and, and get my bar out of it and go do what I want to do with it. Uh, now there's a cutter and I'll get that up and running, and that has that you can add log logistics to. But uh, I do a very simple setup for that. I basically tap in the number I want and hand feed it through the cutter, and you're done. I mean, it's I don't see a big system being needed there. Um, I can't think right now of any other big systems I'm going to do in this game. So um, I'm hoping this describes the whys and the hows of how this works. Now, the other part that it doesn't really explain is the logic gem compressor. Compresses cut gemstones, can only cut one type, pass logic into to turn on. So how did I get it to stop? <laughs> okay, so when the signal is sent from the T intersection that is below the comparison T, meaning the greater than or equal to A, B, the comparison T intersection. There's a T intersection below that. Uh, go around to the left of the building and take a look. Um, when that signal gets reset in the counter, the counter goes back to a zero. 
Now, here's why I'm guessing and why I'd like a little better description. I, I don't mean to bitch. I hate bitching at, at programmers. They are very busy people. And this is a minor thing, and it may or may not even be him. But the logic greater than, it's in the top of the screen. I've left it there this whole time. Compare if A is bigger or equal to B. Now, there's others that are equal, equal. There's others less than or equal. There's others that divide or plus or add. And there's all sorts of different fun stuff we can do in this game, which is awesome. It's great. But the description will output a logic value of one or zero. That, to me, does not describe it well enough to say that it's if, in this case, which is a greater than, in this case, if A is greater or equal to B, it will send a one. Otherwise, it will be a zero. And this is kind of important when you're figuring out your logistics. So the counter gets to 10. 10 is now greater than or equal to B. That sends a signal of one. It goes right below the comparison T intersection into a real T, just a basic logistics T. The signal goes to the right, down the red line, to the gem compressor. That is a signal of one. That tells the gem compressor to turn on. Yep, it closes, it compresses all the gems inside of it. The other, uh, the same signal gets teed and goes off to the left. It goes up through the diode hook, it goes up through the validator hook, it goes up through the flip hook, and it goes to the counter. It resets it because it sends a signal of zero to the counter. Once it sets a signal of zero to the counter, I could send another signal to it. Um, you could have other hooks along the way, and you could increase that signal and do something else with it. Okay, that is very possible. You could add a keypad to it if you really wanted to. I mean, there's lots of things you could do. How it would, who cares? That's other stuff. Once it sends that signal of zero to the counter, the counter now sends a signal down to the greater than, the logic greater than. Okay. I'm going to call it the comparison T intersection. Once it sends that signal of less than and not equal to, it now changes the signal back to zero. Once that zero goes down, hits the T intersection, goes to the right, and it resets the gem compressor because the gem compressor now has a signal of zero coming to it. The other... Uh, well, it's still, the signal does hit the T-intersection, and it does go over to the diode hook, which doesn't care about it because it's going the right direction. But the validator hook stops the zero, which is why the validator hook is there. Because then if it did, if, I, if you don't put the validator hook in there, if you don't put the stop sign with the zero in it, in other words, stopping a zero, okay, so if you don't put the logic validator hook in there, then the, then the signal of zero... When the counter resets and it goes to the comparison T, that is now going to send a signal of zero. You want that signal of zero because you want to reset the gem compressor. But you don't want to continuously reset. I had that issue. I think I showed it. Uh, Post-edit here, I, I can't remember exactly what I showed because I'm uh, too, too many things. Do long day at work and I'm, I'm hoping I'm doing a good job explaining this. Um, I'm hoping this is getting um, um, some people that may or may not want to tackle logistics to give them the confidence to tackle some logistics and not just copy me. Uh, it's, I mean, it's great that you can copy me and whatnot. There's other people you can copy and whatnot. But I like to explain the whys and the wherefores of why this works, why uh, combinators, whether it be in arithmetic or, or whatnot, uh, in other games, why and how logistic systems work. They're actually very simple. I mean, it really comes down to ones and zeros. Uh, sometimes it's greater signals, but it's just a signal. Um, and that signal is commonly it's a one or a zero or an on or an off. I mean, your power button on your computer doesn't work any differently. Uh, really, it doesn't, which is it's very simple. A lot of the systems inside your computer don't work that much differently. I mean, it's, you know, am I on or am I off? Is it, am I am a one or am I a zero? Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, sorry, I digress. The signal of zero, <laughs> now I have to go back. <laughs> Long day at work. Okay. The counter gets reset, sends a signal of zero over to the 
I'm calling it the, the, the comparison T. So A no longer equals B, and it's less than, so it's not greater than. So it's now going to change the signal to zero. The zero signal goes off to the gem compressor, turns the gem compressor off. The door opens. The, it stops the, the compressing, okay, which is what I wanted. I don't want that thing to continue. The signal on the left goes up through the diode hook, right, the arrow. It doesn't care because it's going the right direction, but it stops it at the validator hook. And the reason I want it to be stopped is because if that signal of zero, if you didn't have the validator hook and that signal of zero went off to the logic flip, well, now it turns an incoming signal of zero into a one and anything bigger or equal to one into a zero. Okay, so now I would have a signal of one going out. And that would mess up the counter because it would now set the counter to one. And it, the next time, and it would just continue to be at one. In other words, that counter would never change because that signal of zero keeps getting sent until A is greater than or equal to B. Um, <clears throat> if you're wondering whether you're ever getting a signal, okay, through a logic system, pull a pipe off. If you've got a little lightning bolt coming out of it, then you have a signal going through it. Um, go back to the video, you'll notice there's times when I pulled and I'm like, okay. And I'm, I probably didn't explain at the time, you know, sorry, uh, if this needs greater explanation, um, please mention it down in the comment section below and I will try to tackle, um, maybe a better, um, idea of logistic systems in this particular game. Uh, there's other games that get a lot more difficult cough cough factorial cough cough okay factorial gets really really uh just because of the way you can change the individual equivalent to the hooks that you have here you can actually change a lot of the parameters inside those hooks so um not, not that i'm asking for it i think this game is is great it's awesome i like how they did it because it makes me think uh, and I have to actually sometimes toss the system together on on the fly. And, and like I said, bull in a china shop, bobbing around with it, just trying to figure it out. So anyways, um, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, I had a blast with this one, uh, trying to figure it out in my own head. I, I rarely write down logistic system I, just because I can look at the individual pieces and know without having to do like a diagram like this kind of deal. Um, but I hope, uh, people will refer back to this and, you know, go through it. Uh, that's why I left it all up here, uh, while I was chatting so that, uh, things can be explained. Anyways, uh, I hope you're enjoying the game. I hope you're enjoying the series. Um, if, uh, I don't know if, if you like it and, and you enjoy what I'm doing here and what I do on the channel, I said, like, and subscribe, uh, and leave me comments. Uh, I don't know. I like comments. Uh, it's, it's what drives me to do other stuff that a lot of times or sometimes I don't even think of. Uh, so anyways, uh, you guys have a good night and, uh, we'll talk to you in the next one.